Hades in Greek mythology. Hades, the Greek god of the underworld, is one of the most mysterious and misunderstood deities in ancient Greek mythology. As the brother of Zeus and Poseidon, Hades was a member of the Olympian gods but spent most of his time away from Mount Olympus, governing the realm of the dead. While many associate him with death itself, Hades was not an evil figure in Greek mythology. Instead, he represented the natural cycle of life and death, ruling over the dead with a stern but just hand. The misconception of Hades as a villain often comes from his association with the afterlife and the fear of the unknown. His realm, the underworld, was viewed as a dark and cold place, making him an unpopular deity among mortals. However, Hades' role was essential in maintaining the balance of the cosmos. He ensured that the souls of the deceased found their rightful place in the afterlife, with the virtuous receiving their rewards and the wicked facing their punishments. Hades' birth and rise to power. Hades was the firstborn son of the Titans, Cronus and Rhea. According to myth, Cronus feared that one of his children would overthrow him, so he swallowed each of them at birth. Hades, along with his siblings, spent years trapped in his father's stomach, until Zeus, the youngest of the siblings, managed to free them by tricking Cronus into regurgitating them. After this, the three brothers, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, waged war against the Titans, a battle known as the Titanomachy. Once the Titans were defeated, the three brothers divided the cosmos among themselves. Zeus became the ruler of the heavens, Poseidon took control of the seas, and Hades was given dominion over the underworld. Despite this, Hades' kingdom was vast, stretching far beyond the dead. It included the precious metals and gems hidden beneath the earth, earning him the title Lord of Riches. His association with wealth was a reflection of the treasures found in the depths of the earth. The Underworld, a complex realm. The Underworld, ruled by Hades, was not just a place of punishment as many may think. It was a complex realm divided into several regions, each designated for different types of souls. One of the most well-known parts was Tartarus, where the wicked and those who defied the gods were condemned to eternal torment. Tartarus was a place of deep suffering reserved for the most egregious sinners, such as Tantalus and Sisyphus, whose punishments became famous in mythology. In contrast, the Elysian Fields, or Elysium, was a paradise where the righteous and heroic souls enjoyed eternal peace and happiness. This idyllic region was reserved for those who had lived virtuous lives or who had been favored by the gods. Other souls who led ordinary lives without committing great sins or achieving great feats were sent to the Asphodel Meadows, a neutral zone where they lived out an unremarkable afterlife. The underworld also had rivers like Styx, Leith, and Acheron, which played crucial roles in guiding the dead and representing themes of memory, forgetfulness, and sorrow. Persephone and the Abduction Myth One of the most famous myths involving Hades is the story of his abduction of Persephone, the daughter of Demeter, goddess of agriculture. According to the myth, Hades fell in love with Persephone and took her to the underworld to be his queen. Demeter, devastated by the loss of her daughter, caused a great famine on earth, as she refused to allow crops to grow until Persephone was returned. This led to a crisis, and the gods had to intervene to prevent humanity from perishing. Eventually, a compromise was reached. Persephone would spend part of the year in the underworld with Hades and the rest of the year on earth with her mother. This myth is often interpreted as an explanation for the changing seasons. With Persephone's time in the underworld, corresponding to the barren winter months, while her return to Earth marks the fertile spring and summer season. Hades' relationship with other gods Hades was often seen as a distant figure among the Olympian gods. Rarely leaving his realm, his relationship with Zeus and Poseidon was based on respect and shared power, but the three brothers rarely interacted in myths. Zeus, as king of the gods, occasionally intervened in underworld matters, but Hades ruled his domain with independence. Despite their separation, the three brothers maintained a balance in their rule over the heavens, sea, and the dead. Hades' relationship with other gods, such as Hermes, was more direct. Hermes acted as a psychopath, guiding souls to the underworld, which made him one of the few gods who frequently interacted with Hades. Although Hades was stern and formidable, he was not entirely without allies or associates. The goddess Hecate, 
associated with witchcraft and the crossroads, was also linked to the underworld, and often aided Hades in matters of the dead. Hades and his kingdom's treasures. As the ruler of everything beneath the earth, Hades was often associated with immense wealth. The Greeks believed that precious metals, gems, and minerals originated from his domain. This earned him the epithet Plun, meaning the rich one, from which the Roman name for him, Pluto, is derived. Despite his wealth, Hades was not depicted as greedy or materialistic. Instead, he was more concerned with maintaining order in the underworld than hoarding wealth. The treasures of the underworld also included powerful objects, such as Hades' famed Helm of Darkness, or Helm of Invisibility. This helmet allowed him to become invisible, making him a formidable opponent in both battle and negotiation. During the Titanomachy, Hades used this helm to sneak into the enemy's camp, aiding in the defeat of the Titans. The helm would later become a symbol of Hades' elusive and shadowy nature. Hades as a fair and just ruler. Although often feared, Hades was not seen as cruel or unjust. In fact, Greek mythology portrays him as a fair ruler who ensured that souls received their due rewards or punishments. Unlike figures like Zeus, who could be impulsive and vengeful, Hades was more measured in his actions. He had little interest in the affairs of the living, leaving the other gods to squabble over the mortal realm while he focused on his duties. Hades' fairness is best exemplified in the myth Orpheus and Eurydice. When Orpheus, a talented musician, aimed to the underworld to retrieve his wife Eurydice, Hades and Persephone were moved by his music. Hades allowed Orpheus to take Eurydice back to the world of the living, the condition that Orpheus must not look back at her until they had fully exited the underworld. Though Orpheus ultimately failed in this task, the fact that Hades granted him this rare favor speaks to his capacity for fairness and mercy. Hades in Roman Mythology The Roman version of Hades, known as Pluto, retained many of the same characteristics as his Greek counterpart. However, Pluto's association with wealth and riches was more emphasized in Roman culture, reflecting the empire's vast and growing wealth during its peak. Pluto was also worshipped in various Roman rituals related to death, fertility, and wealth, and his name became synonymous with the riches hidden beneath the earth. Roman writers like Virgil expanded on Hades' role in the afterlife, especially in epic works like the Aeneid, where the hero Aeneas journeys to the underworld. This Roman portrayal of the underworld was more elaborate, with detailed descriptions of the various regions, punishments, and rewards awaiting souls. Although the myths surrounding Hades and Pluto were similar, the Roman focus on power and wealth gave Pluto a slightly different cultural significance. River Styx and the Role of Charon One of the most iconic features of Hades' realm was the River Styx, the boundary between the world of the living and the underworld. Souls of the dead had to cross this river, reach their final resting place. And this journey was facilitated by Charon, the boatman of the underworld. Charon would ferry souls across the sticks, but only if they had the proper payment, typically a coin placed in the mouth of the deceased during their burial. The river Styx also held special significance for the gods. It was said that any oath sworn upon the river Styx was unbreakable, and violating such an oath would result in severe consequences. The river symbolized the ultimate boundary and the irreversible nature of death. In some myths, the river had mystical properties such as granting invincibility, as seen in the story of Achilles, who was dipped into the sticks by his mother to make him nearly immortal. Cerberus, the Three-Headed Guard Dog Cerberus, the fearsome three-headed dog, was one of Hades' most loyal and recognizable companion. His primary role was to guard the gates of the underworld, ensuring that no soul could escape and no living person could enter without permission. Cerberus was a monstrous creature the mane of snakes and a serpent's tail, making him a formidable guardian of the dead. Despite his terrifying appearance, Cerberus played an important symbolic role in Greek mythology. His presence represented the finality of death and the inescapability of the underworld. However, few heroes in Greek mythology, such as Heracles, Hercules, and Orpheus, managed to outwit or overcome Cerberus. These myths highlight the tension between life and death and the rare instances where mortals could interact with the underworld without becoming trapped there. The Legacy of Hades in Modern Culture 
Hades has remained a significant figure in modern interpretations of mythology, often portrayed in literature, film, and other media as a dark, complex character. Modern depictions of Hades sometimes emphasize his misunderstood nature, painting him as a tragic or even sympathetic figure. His role as the god of the underworld has made him a popular subject in horror and fantasy genres, with adaptations often drawing on his connection to death, wealth, and the afterlife. In popular culture, Hades' myth is sometimes explored through a psychological lens, with his isolation in the underworld reflecting themes of loneliness and power. Movies like Disney's Hercules portray him as a villain, while others like Percy Jackson and Hades Town offer more nuanced depictions of his character. Regardless of the interpretation, Hades' influence on storytelling remains strong, demonstrating the enduring power of Greek mythology. The duality of Hades. Hades embodies the dual nature of the underworld itself, both a place of terror and tranquility where justice is served and the cycle of life and death is respected. Although feared by mortals, Hades played an essential role in ancient Greek cosmology. His myths explore fundamental questions about life, death, and what lies beyond, showing that Hades was not a villain but a necessary force of balance and order. Through his governance of the dead, Hades reminds us that death is a part of life, and his myth continues to resonate as a reflection on mortality, the afterlife, and the eternal mysteries of the human condition. Whether viewed as a just ruler or a feared deity, Hades' legacy in mythology endures as a powerful symbol of the inevitable journey we all must take. Thank you for joining us on this journey through legend and lore. Subscribe for more mythical tales and epic legends.